is a process that's used when you want to connect to a service that's not on ECX or the, or the Exchange Fabric from Network Edge. So if you think, if you remember, Network Edge can only connect to things that are on the, the uh, ECX Fabric. Uh, network Edge is an extension of the Fabric, therefore it can only connect to things that are on the Fabric. So it either has to be on the Fabric or you have to bring it. So we're going to talk about the B in BYLC, uh, bringing your own connection. So the way it works is that the ECX switch is here. The Cloud Exchange switch network edge device is hanging on this side. And the NFB infrastructure is sitting right here. The NFB infrastructure is the underlying infrastructure that provides the underlying infrastructure for the VNFs, the virtual network functions. Uh, in our case, network edge is, is our name for it. To spin up a network edge function on top of the NFB platform that is connected into the ECX switch. So right now, if the service is not on the exchange and you have to bring your own connection, there's an air gap here that we need to, that we need to fill. So, so the way it works is the customer will go out and they will talk to whatever provider that they want to bring the service to the exchange. It's not currently on the exchange. So say in this case, let's say it's a CenturyLink MPLS, for example. So they've got a, a CenturyLink MPLS network that they want to connect their WAN sites back to, and they want to have Network Edge connected into their MPLS network. So the way it would work is the customer would order an MPLS circuit here, and it would get terminated into the DMARC. Let's just put uh, the CenturyLink DMARC right there. And a circuit gets run, they order the circuit, they order to the, the IBX address. Uh, that they've selected, and they order a circuit into that IBX, and it gets terminated into the DMARC. One very crucial, critical thing, any service that you want to bring your own connection to must be tagged. Cannot stress this enough. The reason the service must be tagged, we don't care if it's dot one q or, uh, or Q and Q, it must be tagged because the ECX switch, if it sees an untagged frame, it'll drop the packet. So the service must be tagged. Cannot stress that enough. So uh, in this case, you know, the customer, they, they reached out to CenturyLink, ordered the circuit. The circuit has been ordered and it is sitting here waiting for the last bit of layer one connectivity that needs to be done before we can start building layer two underlay. And then at the end of the day, we'll establish layer, layer three pairing over this construct. From the network edge device and let's go ahead and draw it in now as a PE router on the provider side. So the first thing that'll do there, there's a workflow process that customers can run and they really should run it. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but they really should run the workflow workflow process. We developed that, this workflow process to simplify things. A lot of customers really don't understand the ins and outs of DMARC and, and uh, you know, cross-connecting circuits and everything in our data center. If they follow the workflow, then the workflow does all of this for them and it builds a lot of the layer two underlay that they'll need to, to create the, the overall layer two underlay from the network edge device to the PE device. So in this case, when you run the uh, workflow, it'll do three things. The first thing is you'll, they'll supply an LOA a letter of authorization. The letter of authorization is given from the provider to the customer and the letter of authorization tells them where in our data center, it tells our technicians where to run a cable from, from our ECX switch to the DMARC location in, in their uh, cabinet or their cage location in our data center. It also gives them the authorization to do it. So it tells them where it's at and then the authorization. You'll hear CFA, Channel facility assignment, I've heard also heard it called carrier facility assignment, but the LOA portion of it gives them permission to do it, and the CFA portion of it tells them where to do it. The second thing that'll, uh, that'll get instantiated as part of the workflow is a service profile. And a service profile is a, um, a logical construct that will tell um, the ECX switch what type of port it is. Or it'll, or it'll tell the ECX switch, here's a container to put more information in. So the service profile will get put here on the, on the uh, ECX switch on that port. So a service profile is sitting here. And the service profile um, 
has to be told a couple of things, namely the VLAN address and then the speed of the connection. There's some lower level underlying things that need to come from the carrier, such as the, 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 TP, the, TP, the TPID, the type of framing it, framing it is, whether it's .1Q or Q and Q, but that's all in the workflow and the customer just needs to know that information and they just select it in the workflow.